And as we do every Wednesday at 40 past the hour, let's jump over to our man, Teddy Cakestat. Folks, you can read Teddy's Tiger Forex report every Monday. He puts out a new issue. He's got updates throughout the week when warranted. You can check it out under the newsletter tab at TFNN. It's only $97, folks. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You got two archive webinars that go in there as well as part of the membership. And yeah, we got some action as usual uh, on Wednesday. Teddy Cakestat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Yes, we have some action today. Boy, uh, a little bit of a pullback from the market highs that we saw earlier in the week, Teddy. We just gave up about 90 points in the S&P. Market's continuing to drop off about six tenths percent. We got a lot going on across the globe, though, as well, um, in terms of markets lower in Europe. We got some action in the dollar index, got some action in crude catching a little bit of a bid. Where do you want to kick things off this morning? Uh, I think the Euro European vibration is something we should definitely address is that it definitely Im impacts the uh, FX markets. Let's do it, man. Okay. Well, we have the CPI that came out in the uh, UK today that was uh, way above forecast. So and I'm really surprised that it's not catching as much news that our own market reaction uh, over here so yet. Yet. Yes. And I'm stress yet. Um, sure. <clears throat> definitely has impacted the foreign markets, their, their uh, equity markets. Uh, the British pound, um, I'm bearish going into this week to begin with and throughout the next like week and a half. Um, I'm surprised that this number didn't cause more volatility, um, at least for on a, a couple of hours, at least. Um, it's very surprising to me, you know. So, I mean, the only currency right now that's strong against the dollar today is the euro, whereas actually the dollar has caught us quite a bit. And when it co comes to uh, like cu currencies like the Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar is getting smashed today. And irony of it all, the U.S. dollar Canada, which has been in just a sloppy range trade today, had an explosive move, you know. So there's it's very interesting to me when you have some of your <clears throat> lesser major FX crosses that are, excuse me, so volatile and active, whereas you have the pound, which is the third largest currency in the dollar index, and it's kind of in a tight trade today. You know, it just doesn't make any sense to me when it comes to that. But I think we have to be aware of the CPI there, that inflation is not going away in Europe, and that's going to um, be, I think, a ringing bell throughout the summer. And that's going to be something we have to address with our U.S. Fed as well. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable, man. I was looking at those numbers this morning, and I was thinking of you, of course, knowing we talk on Wednesdays. And the numbers, folks, okay, so UK inflation fell to from 10.1 to 8.7%. You're talking about 8.7%. The market was looking for 8.2, though. And on a month-by-month -month basis, Teddy, it was 1.2% versus 0.8%. Um, mm -hmm. Core CPI rose to 6.8% from 6.2%. It seems like they're a world of difference away from where we are right now. And who knows, because you've been talking about that you're looking for some more hikes, man, and we get a lot of numbers as we come into the end of May, the early part of June. We're three weeks out from a Fed hike today. But if you could explain to listeners, Teddy, because I know, you know we're talking about other central banks. <clears throat> you've mm -hmm. talked to us about when, of course, they're going to be hiking, that's going to impact right. their yields, <laughs> our yields. When you see something like this, now we know that anything can happen in our economy. And I think a lot of people at least recognize that we got a long way to go. Maybe we're on the path, but boy, things might be a little rocky. But with that type of a number in the UK, and you see, I, I was pulling it up as you were talking about it in terms of the pound and everything like that. How do you see that for their Fed? Because, of course, it talks about in just any random article you're talking about that, yeah, they might not be done hiking, man, if, if they're still dealing with rising inflation. Is that going to really put the pressure even more so on our Federal Reserve? Or how, do you, how do you relate that back to our Fed when you see numbers like the U.K.? And the U.K. is the pound. It's not maybe as big as the euro. But how do you mm -hmm. see that affecting, you know, Chairman Powell maybe three weeks from today if they know that they're going to be competing with the U.K. that now has core CPI rising to 6.8 percent from 6.2? Sure, sure. Well, if CPI is rising in uh, in the U.K., that means that across, they still are trade partners with the EU. That means you're going to have inflation that's not just in the U.K. It's going to impact the EU. Now, combined between the UK and the EU, we still do import a lot of products from those countries. So if there's inflation in 
Yeah. Those countries, that means there's going to be inflation in our imports. Okay, so that's going to mean that there's going to be a tug of war, definitely, I think, between our Fed and the Bank of England. Whereas if, you know, now we are probably not going to, let's say that the Bank of England raises a half a point. We're not going to retaliate with a half a point just to counteract them. Remember, we're ahead of the curve on this. Okay, so, but it definitely, if the, the more or the longer we see any rate hikes or especially larger rate rate hikes by um you know countries such as the UK or out of the, or even out of the EU for you to think of the of the um, <clears throat> so their central bank and what have you then i think you're going to see more stress on our fed to yes continue to raise a quarter of a point you know now i think that they are out running out of bullets and aren't going to be able to do what we've done over the past year and a half but then we still have inflation here you know so i mean until we see and then we have I think the the, the um, jobless claims tomorrow. You remember we're coming into holiday markets. You know we have jobless claims tomorrow, and then we have a three day weekend before we have unemployment next week. You know we have some big numbers that are going to come out before the Fed meeting. And right now, I don't think unemployment is going to be where they want it. You know, remember they want high unemployment, and some of those numbers are starting to be reflective there. But then there's other things that I mean, we have the unemployment is not breaking the way they want it to. They want it, they want the higher unemployment, and for some reason we still have lots of job growth in lots of areas in this country. You yeah. know, so that's twisting them their narrative apart. So unless they start to drop the employment factor out of the equation, a quarter point hike, I can't see how that's not going to happen, and I think that's going to weigh on yields as well because you know if you look at where we're at. The Treasury bonds and the Treasury notes are still trading a lot higher than they were back in the October of last year. And that's what I mean, how many rate hikes have we had since then? You know, right. so if you look at the, the rubber band effect rate right alone should have, you know, yields explode over the next few months. Yeah, there's so much volatility, man, in terms of unknowns that we're coming into. What do you think about the whole debt conversation going on and how that's impacting things. Um, it's kind of the usual yeah. antics in Washington in terms of disagreements. They're talking about spending cuts. Of course, they're talking about spending cuts, man. Um, what do you think about that in terms of, because obviously when you're talking about yields, um, do you factor that into how you're looking at things over the next few weeks? Because you just said it, man. I mean, we got Thursdays tomorrow. Friday is before a long weekend. I imagine that people will be trying to leave their desks a little bit early. And then, boy, we come back, man, and, you know, a week from tomorrow is June 1st. Just like that, we're into the mix of kind of critical time frame of that debt limit. Sure, sure. Well, the, you know, the whole conversation, like you said, is nothing new on both sides. Um, yeah. I, I think the biggest problem is, is that, you know, look at how much debt we've tacked on in just the last year and a half. Um, we, we cannot be running where we have these spending packages of multi trillions of dollars. I mean, people think if people are numb to the word trillion, um, but know, that's right? because they don't understand math. A trillion dollars is still truly a lot of money. You know, and especially when you've constrained, you know, put a stranglehold on the economy by force you know, for two years, you know, I mean, and now you look at inflation and taxation running amok, you know, like you, you have to have some sensibilities here. So, okay, maybe you don't do spending cuts, but then you have to put a mandate that there can be no multi-trillion dollar packages under any reason, unless it's for defense you know, of our country, period, for, for America for at least a year or two. I mean, it's become some, common now that every six months they're like, oh, we need another two trillion dollars for these new programs and things. Teddy, hang yeah, with us one more stuff. segment, all right? I want to go over the dollar index when we get back because I know sure, everybody loves that. Just, we'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. We'll come back with okay. Teddy. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down about 33 points. Uh, no lift on the open right now. Eight tenths percent in the red. And folks, we're talking to our man Teddy Kegstat. You got a few minutes. Head on over to the front page of TFNN. Right under the newsletter tab, you'll see Teddy's Tiger Forex report. You can check it out. It's $97. And Teddy, I wanted to check out the dollar index. And I know you do such a great job of giving us the information of the individual pairs and how there's divergences going on, which I think is so mm -hmm. cool, which is why people should really check out your report to understand because so often we just look at the dollar index, it's really easy, it's you know a lot of euro in there, pound, um, but you do a great job of breaking down the individual pairs, but a lot of people love that dollar index, man, and we've gotten quite a spike up to 103.61 right now. What do you think about the dollar index at this price level after quite a little bit of a lift here? 
Uh, well, it's definitely had a nice little pause here when we're, we're, while it's buffering on these new highs now. And because we're coming to a holiday market especially, this is typically when you start to see a lot of sideways action because the markets sure. just start to get thin. You know, I mean, yeah. we, we've hit good resistance. Can we go higher? Yeah, but I think that's really indicative of if the euro actually – euro us dollar goes lower right now because you can see how all the currency pairs right now today are down versus the dollar only the euro is up you know so yes. and i mean that's how much of an influence it has and like i sure. said in the last segment i mean look at the new zealand dollar today i mean it's getting hammered you know i mean the australian dollar is really getting hit you know Oof, on a daily zealand, basis yeah. you know so when you see that momentum, you can see that there's strength in the dollar index, and a lot of that has to do with yields. You know, I mean, even though yields sure. are slightly lower, or they were before we started the uh, last segment, you know, I mean, it, overall they're strong, and they should they continue are. to get strong. You know, and I think that will be one of the biggest fundamental supports for the dollar index. So any break in the dollar index, I see over the next not just days, but over the next few weeks and couple months is a break to buy, I think. You know, we found nice. a lot of support in the dollar. Yeah, everyone keeps talking about the bricks and all this and stuff. Like, yeah, you know what? The dollar eventually will turn. Eventually the world will come to an end. A lot of eventually a lot of things will happen, but right I now like I wouldn't get too uh, um, you know, worried about it. Pretty remarkable. Risk-free rate of return, right? 10 year, 3.7%. Mm -hmm. Not bad, man. Not bad with everything going on. Teddy, I appreciate the time as always, man. I look forward to talking to you next week, man. Thanks. You guys have a good happy Have a great uh, Memorial holiday. Day weekend, man.